What's up guys, Justin here with the renderingessentials.com back with another Lumion 3D tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about place mode and how to import objects and place them inside your renderings. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so to start off, we're gonna load one of the Lumion example models. And in this case, we're going to, we're gonna go into the examples tab and I think we're going to use the Villa, Via Amonzi, Villa Amonzi file, um, specifically because it's there for you to practice furnishing objects so when you go inside of this model um, and you load it up you're gonna notice that there's a lot of different things in here um, that haven't been added so there's a lot of empty room so it's great for practicing adding things into Lumion and so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fly up into our building and in this case um, let me see, I think there's a couple rooms up on this top level that we can start furnishing. So this would be a good, uh, this would be a good example of how to start bringing things into your rendering. So you can see how right now there's several spaces in here that don't really have anything in them. And so what we want to do is we want to start bringing in objects. And so in order to do that, you're going to click on the objects button here. And by the way, I'm using Lumion 9. So if you're using an older version, this may look a little bit different. You'll just have to go find, um, you'll just have to go find find basically the button that looks like this, but it all kind of works the same way. And so we want to be in this object section that allows us to start bringing things in. And so when we click on objects, what that does is that allows us to edit different things inside of our model. So like for example, it's more of an edit mode than anything else. So like for example, if I wanted to move this chair around or something like that, you can see how I can click and move that around. That's a, uh, this is the mode that we're gonna be in when we do this. But in this case, I wanna focus specifically on place mode. And so what place mode does is that allows you to bring objects in to your rendering. And so in this case, we're gonna click on this button for place. And in Lumia 9, it's really cool. You get this great, uh, you get this great library in here. And you can see how for right now, for some reason, this is set on like a tennis court or a badminton court or something like that. We don't really want that. Um, but you can see how you can click between these different objects in order to bring different things into your model and so or into your rendering and so you'll notice right now I'm in the inside or the indoor library so there's several different categories down here for different things you can bring into your model so in this case I'm an in indoor but if I was to click on like effects for example that's gonna give me a list of different effects that I can bring in so you can see how if I was to click on this I can bring in like a water effect or fire or smoke things like that so if I was to click on sound this would actually bring things in um, that are actual sound. And so you can see how as I move my mouse over these, it's going to preview the different sounds. And so in this case, we want to focus specifically on the indoor options. And so the first thing I want to bring in is let's say we want to bring in kind of a comfortable chair and place it inside this room. You can see how in order to do that, all I have to do is click on the chair in my library and then I just move my mouse right here and I can bring this in. And one tip that you're gonna to wanna to note, um, this is gonna be really important, is if you hold the R key when you bring this in, you can see how you can actually adjust the rotation of the object as you place it. So this allows me to kind of move things around and place this object wherever I want it to be. And then when you let up, it's kind of locked to whatever that rotation was. You can see how when I place this, this will place a copy of this chair in this corner. And so you can just continue around and you can complete completely furnish a house just by doing this. So let's say for example, I wanted this to be some kind of a office or something like that. Um, so I could bring in, let's say, maybe like this lounge chair or something like this, I could bring this in and place it right here. And then I could go into my, my tables or my desks section and I could go find a desk, maybe like this one and I could place this in here just by clicking. And so let's say, for example, that I placed this in here and I wanted to move it around. I didn't like where it ended up. Well, all you have to do is you can just click on these options or you can also use keyboard shortcuts. So if I tap the M key, for example, that's gonna move me into move mode. Well, now I can move this chair around just by clicking on the little icon indicator. So you can see how as I click and drag, I can move this desk 
around so you can move objects really easily. In the same way, if I hold the R key, I can rotate this desk because this desk got brought in backwards. So you can use the M and the R and the S key in order to adjust those different objects. We may talk about those more, or I apologize, the L key. So the L key will let you make things bigger or smaller um, to adjust the scale of different objects. So you can see how bringing in individual objects is really easy in this way. And so in this case, I want to use another example. And so we're going to go to the other side of the building and we're going to bring in a couple different car models. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop out this car model that's in here. I'm just going to click on delete. Whoops. Actually, I'm going to click on transport first. So this acts as a filter down here in the lower left hand side. So you can see how like, for example, if I have the transport selected, the option for this car shows up, but none of the trees do. Where if I click on the trees, you can see all the icons for the trees show up, but I can't select the car. So you can use this in order to kind of filter out your selection, which gets really good when you're dealing with like all these landscape options. Um, you know, you can kind of filter those out and only focus on the things you want to focus on. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete out this car and I'm going to place a couple cars right here. And so to do that, I'm going to click on the transport library and then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to click on cars and so when I bring in cars what that's going to do is that's going to let me um, look through the Lumion model category or the car category and so what I can do is I can bring this car in and I can click and place it and you can see how I can bring in multiple different cars and one thing you're going to notice about this is when I do this it kind of changes the color of the cars between placements. So like for example if I brought in a few different cars like this one you can see how it's actually randomizing the car color when I bring that in so that's actually gonna bring these in um, randomized and one of the big reasons for that is a lot of the time what you're doing is you're kind of filling in parking lots and other things like that and so this will randomize your color so that these don't all look uniform like it wouldn't be realistic for there to be 500 white cars in here um, but you can see how using place mode you can place a little bit of everything in here so let's say for example that I wanted to put like a boat out in the ocean because um, this model looks out over the ocean you could look in the boat section and we'll go ahead and we'll put a tug out here and so you can see how you can place this out in the ocean just by clicking. So placing objects is really easy. And uh, the other thing I want to talk about real quick, I'm not going to get too in depth, I may do another video on this later, is there's a couple different modes for placing objects. And actually before I do that, there's also an option in here to import models from exterior locations. So like for example, um, if you bring in like a SketchUp model or something like that, you can place imports either imports that you've used before. So I have like some different food imports and some different carpets and rugs and other models in here. Um, you can place those objects from exterior modeling programs just by clicking in here. So not really a super great example, but you can see how I can take this lamp and I can place this um, from an exterior rendering program. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one back out. Um, but the way, and uh, so you have two options here when you do this, you can either save so you can save things into your library and you can bring things in that you've accessed before or you can click on this import button. What that'll do is that'll pop up a window where you can go find different um, 3D files and bring them in. So you can see how you can find SketchUp files or 3ds Max files, lots of different options for bringing different models in. So there's really a lot of options for bringing in new things into Lumion from exterior programs. And so now what I want to talk about just a little bit, um, probably the last thing in this video, is I want to talk about mass placements. So like for example, I, I can bring different trees in here by clicking and I can kind of like furnish this out. Um, and obviously some of these are getting brought in. They're not getting brought in at different sizes or anything like that. Um, so sometimes what you want to do is you want to bring things in that are more randomized. So like for example, I may have like six different kinds of trees and I may want to create kind of a forest back in here. And uh, it's really hard to do that individually. Well, what Lumion has is it actually has these mass placement options. So there's mass placement and there's also cluster placement. And 
what those allow you to do is that allows you to kind of place random objects um, based on some uh, different things that you different uh, constraints that you pick. So in this case, for example, if I activate mass placement mode, you can see how I get this little arrow in here. And so what this arrow is gonna do is that's gonna allow me to dictate what direction my mass placement is gonna go. And once I click once, and then I click again, you can see how this is gonna allow me to randomly mass place a lot of different objects. You can see how in this case, the last time I did this, I was placing different furniture pieces, but for now, we're gonna add different trees in here. So you can see how right now, this is just multiple copies of the same tree. And you can adjust how many of these trees get brought in using the slider, as well as you can randomize the direction using a slider, the slider, and you can randomize the spacing and the offset. So how far off this line these objects are placed in here. So you can see how I can kind of randomly place these trees using this tool. However, you can see how this isn't very realistic using just one tree model. And so what I can do is I can come in here and I can select a different kind of tree like this African olive and I can click on this and that's gonna add that tree into the list. And so what this is doing is this is randomly adding objects in here. Um, so you can select different kinds of models in order to put this in here. And you can see how when I do this, every one of these trees that gets put in here, it gets added to the list. And this kind of randomizes the way all of this is placed. So you can see how instead of just uniformly having one tree, I can actually set this up to have many different kinds of trees inside this space. And you can see how I can put these, if I don't randomize the offset, these will all be in a straight line. Or the wider I drag this, you can see how this is moving these outward. And so you can use this to really quickly mass place lots of different things inside your renderings. And once you're done, you just click this checkbox and that's gonna let you go back into build mode. And so that, allows you to place things kind of in a line and that's great. Um, I really like this other option that just, I think this is a new function in Lumia 9. If you click on it for cluster placement, what that's gonna let you do is that's gonna let you place a tree and it's gonna place multiple different versions of whatever tree you have selected and it's gonna kind of randomize them and place them in a cluster. So you can see how it's really easy for me to just randomly start adding trees in here and really quickly create kind of a, um, and really quickly kind of create a forest using this tool. So, and I will note, you may want to go back in here and kind of randomize the size. So, one of the functions that's in here is if you were to select multiple different trees. So I could hold the control key and come in here and select these. And uh, if you click on this little left arrow, once you've selected multiple different options, there's different things in here that you can do in order to kind of randomize things because what you don't want is you don't want this. What you don't want in here, and I may do like a full video on this later, what you don't want in here is you don't want all of these to look uniform and be the same size. Well, you can come in here and you can click on this button for randomize size. And when you do that, this is going to go through and it's going to randomly scale these. And you can also click to randomize the rotation. And you can also randomize the position. So if you select a lot of different objects in here, you can kind of randomize these until you get the look that you want. So there's a lot of tools in here um, in order to kind of help you add things like plants and other things like that as well. And I may do like a full video on just these options right here. But that should give you a pretty good overview of how to bring objects in inside of Lumion. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Did I leave something out? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.